Hey folks, it's Craig from Airmar. I'm here with Chris from Airmar, and I'm also here with Chris Sullivan from Navtronics, which is a, an Airmar certified installer based out of York, Maine. And today, we just finished up an install for Smart Boat System on Chris's boat. Chris, great boat. Can you tell us about the boat? Tell us the state it was in before we did the install <laughs> and what your desired results were. Awesome, thank you very much. So this boat, it's an older boat. It's a 1988 Nautique. It's got old stuff, it's analog. I wanted to bring it into the now. We are a technology company and with Smart Boat, we are able to take our analog senders, sensors, and then we're also able to take things like fuel tank and yep. tank levels and all of that and be able to put that onto the NEMA network. So that's what we've gone ahead and we've done on this install today very simply. Nice, nice. Well, we're gonna have a look at what we did and we'll go step by step on how we did the install and Chris is gonna show us on some of the automations and alerts that we can do with the smart flex software let's go on board guys welcome on board guys now this helm right here is fairly standard of a boat of this vintage if you get on them you're going to see analog gauges and those have analog senders on them a lot of time the sender is still good and the gauges start to go out on them and we have to start troubleshooting starting to figure out what's the ohm resistance are they american are they european and what are those now with smart boat if that sender is still good we don't need those analog gauges we don't have to find a replacement for that we are able to then put them into our smart boat and bring them up onto our mfd like you see in a lot of the modern boats with the new engines some of the other things are we have a smart flex fuel sensor for the diesel fuel flow we've gone ahead and we've set that up on here we're going to get our fuel burn rates in this case on each motor and we have that and we combine that in on simrad with our speed we are able to get our fuel economy and our fuel range so now we can go out we can run the boat we can see what speeds we're running at and where are we most economical and how far can we get Another really nice feature with the smart boat, we have thermistors and we've put them into each engine exhaust elbow and I am able to monitor my exhaust temperature so I can see if I have an impeller failure ahead of time as those temperatures start to creep up. And also because we have the ability to, I've added engine room temperature on here. Now I can monitor my engine space and I can set via smart boat, we're gonna show you guys in a few minutes, how to turn on an engine room blower. When a temperature gets to a certain point, we automatically turn the blower on, and now we one less thing we have to worry about. So let's hop down below and show you guys the install of all of this. All right, now we are down in the engine room with our smart boat modules. As you can see, we actually had space here to mount both of them side by side, which makes it very easy. We can connect these via Wi-Fi to share the data between them or if you have a bigger boat, you can run ethernet between them and connect them in that respect as well. So there's a lot of functionality in there. Now you're seeing these modules, we have a T1 module, we have a T2 module. In this case, our T1 module, that's gonna be monitoring our tank levels. On this boat, we have it going into both of our fuel tanks. We're actually using pressure senders on it, but we can monitor any fluid level with that, with the pressure senders on there and configuring it through the web page, which we'll show you here shortly. And then on our T2s over here, this is where our thermistors are going in and that's gonna monitor our engine room temperatures, our exhaust temperatures, our gen set temperatures, all of those kind of things. We also have our relays here. So if we wanna turn on our engine room blowers, we can go ahead and do that from this and if this, then that type of a scenario. Now, something else worth mentioning on Smart Boat is you can use existing cables. We're not dealing with special proprietary cables here. We are using existing NEMA cables, creating our own Smart Boat network. Now, with our Smart Boat network, we can connect in our battery shunts. We can also connect in our Smart Flex fuel flow meters. So with that, we're gonna go into that install here in a minute and show you guys what that is. But we can go ahead here, create our own network, dial it in, goes right into our smart boat, and from our smart boat, it then goes out into the NEMA network. All right, so we just talked about the smart boat, and one of the great features here is this smart flex 
fuel sensor for the diesel engines. Now with the diesel engine, we have a feed and a return line. So that creates a much bigger footprint when we start talking about these things. And with this Airmar Smart Flex sensor, Chris here will be able to tell us a little bit more. But this is a really small footprint what I found for doing the install on this. Yeah, exactly. That was the whole idea behind the design was to be able to have an all-in-one unit. There was a small footprint, no need for any extra fuel sensors for the diesel, and then a gauge package to, 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 to siphon <laughs> that gauge, and then send wires, all this extra cabling. We all now have it in one package right here, small, the feed and return and differential. Uh, all these diesel flow sensors come in a range from 50 to 4,000 liters per hour. And you can get them in different. We have a single input. If you have that engine that just needed one input or have a difficult install, need to put it on either side of the engine. You Got can it. Get one single for each side, feed and return. And that's simple in the software to choose which one is the feed, which one's the return. Perfect. So I think now what we'll do is we'll go ahead and let's show everybody how we can configure all of this and set this all up. All right, so now that we've set up all the sensors on the boat, let's go in to look at the software and see how we can program it and how easy it is to get through these menus. Uh, when we start off here, we can look at the View Network page. On our View Network page, we can see every device and sensor that's on the boat. So not only can we see any sensor that we set up on the Smart Boat module, but any other device, MFD, sensor that's on it, it is already talking on the NMA2000 network. We can monitor it and see it and even actually create oh, some of our alarms based on those PGNs. So let's take a look at here at the View Network page. We can see devices, and you're gonna, one of the key features you're going to notice on here is we've broken it out into a human readable format. What that means is you can actually see what the PGN, the source, the instance, and what the actual device is just by looking at this page and see everything on your whole network. From here, we can see the diesel flow is already set up. We can see our, our pressure sensors, and we've got even engine data all coming through. We can monitor everything. To get into setting up a device, we can go to over here on our left side. We're going to go over to View Devices. Then you can see the live data coming right from these devices. We have our port exhaust of measuring temp of 71 degrees. Not bad right now because the engines aren't running, right? So that's pretty good. We go to configuration. We can choose how we set up these devices. Now, it's important to know what device you have and what where you plugged it in. So hopefully along the way during your install, you've kept a log of what device is plugged into one port because that's going to make a difference. You want to make sure you know that if your exhaust temp is plugged into B port B12, that you're going to assign that to the right place. So down here, we have our port exhaust as an example. And you can see it's an easy drop down menu. So whether you had a, a thermistor, a binary switch, a resistor sender, or a DC voltage, because we're on a T2 box, we can see and conf configure that input B12 for any type of device. Since it's a thermistor, we're gonna st stay with that. Now, once we're in this page, you can see it has a description. This is where you can set up your friendly description to tell you which one it is. In this case, we have two engines. So we want to know which exhaust we're talking to. So we named it port exhaust. That way we know that this device reports directly to that. And it's easy when you look at the format, you look at that view network page, you can see what that device is called. Now we can go down. There's a whole list of drop downs of sensors out there. Now, not only do we have our AMR sensors, but we have a wide list of a different range of anything from little fuse to AMR sensors to garment sensors, any of the thermistor that's out there that's known that we have, we keep updating this list as it, as it grows, but it's an easy drop down menu just to select a device that's out there now. In here, you'll have your temperature ranges, so it's important to know what is the spec for that device. When you set it up the range, it's going to default to 0 to 100, but you may have a sensor, in this case, does 20 to 180. That's going to set it up to customize it to that spec. So it's important to know what the spec of the device is so you can customize it. If you go outside of the range, it's going to allow you, but no, you're not going to be within the tolerance of that sensor if you do that. And down below, we set up the device type. Here, we set up an exhaust type sensor, but you can choose any type of different device it is. If it's an engine room temp, or it's an exhaust temp, or it's a bait well temp, you choose what kind of sensor it is you're plugging in, because it doesn't know, but you're telling it what it is you're doing. In our next screen, since we've got to have multiple, right now is our first sensor, it's our first exhaust, we can, we can name it instance zero. We know there's no other temperature out there. This is the first one that's been set up on the network. We had that view network page to it, the monitor and see if there's any other sensors out there with that temp and exhaust already out there. We know it's not. So we can just name this one zero, we'll make sure we don't have any conflicts on that network. If there is a conflict and you set it up, it's gonna tell you. So if, don't worry, if you try to set it up and you're like, oh, I don't know if it's there and I set it up as zero and it's something else, it's gonna come up in big bold letters saying it's already a conflict of another input. And the last one you can choose 
the PGN we want to send. So whether it's 130316 is a common standard PGN these days, but some older devices uh, are looking for some of that, like a, a temperature 312. Uh, if you have a device that's looking for that, you can enable it and turn it on so that you make sure you can see that on all your MFDs. And from there, we click Save. It sets up the device and start, it'll start reporting. Each box is going to do a quick restart at every time. So when you see the numbers go to zero, don't worry, give it a few seconds. Each module is going to do a refresh. Once it does that, you can see the display starts outputting data. So now let's take a look at those diesel flow meters that we talked about earlier. Well, easy setup is the same as before. Since it's a digital sensor, as you can see on the screen here, when we go to configuration and digital sensors, they're automatically going to pop up. It's going to tell you the serial number, the model that's there. It's really easy to figure out what it is. What you got to do is to configure it for what uh, engine you have it on, what type of configuration you have. So if we go to configure those sensors now, we can see that we have a drop down that tells us each meter, so we have meter one, meter two, and we can assign it which instance, so which engine is it on? Is it on engine zero and engine one? We've assigned it here. Since these are differential units, all it is is a single sensor. We had talked about earlier in the video, if you had multiple locations that the sensors were tough to put a differential and you couldn't wire it there, we wanted to do two separate ones for a feed and return. You could do that in here, what you would set is, as a dual sensor, and you would assign which sensor is your feed and which one is your return. But in most cases, you don't want to do the differential. You can't. It's all one unit, compact, saving space for yourself. So once you've set it up for the engine, sign the serial number for each engine. It's as simple as clicking continue. And then here, you're going to get your engine parameters. So you can see some different dynamic engines, the 489, which is the most common engine and data parameter. Um, you also have trip con consumption 497. All these you can enable or turn off if you want to use them. But as simple as click save changes because they're already enabled. And this, once again, this mod module is going to do a soft reset. Anytime you do any configuration changes, it's going to want to do a quick reset for you. But once it's reset, we can actually go over and click digital sensors on the left side here and go to fl fuel flow. And once it reset, now we can see the serial number, the engine instance, and how much actual the total volume of fuel is, is going through. We can see all the data. So now we see it's live, we've got the data, and it's easy to set up. Thanks for watching. I hope you agree that this smart boat system is a great system for upgrading electronics in your boat, giving new visibility to old sensors that are on board, and adding capabilities to your helm. We want to thank Chris from Navtronics for joining us and allowing us to work on, on his boat. And if you want more information, go to airmar.com and look at SmartBoat. I think you'll be impressed by what you see.